Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's sunset on a, well, the end of a growing day. I did get some comments from the episode uh, saying that I had actually wasted the wheat. I read the wiki as saying it needed 50 wheat, but apparently it only needs one. So let's just grab one of you for a second. And let's give this a test and see if that is the case. Uh, let's put you in there. Okay, she should be done. And let's see if that gets us a cereal bar. It does. So one piece of wheat, not ten, gets you a cereal bar. And they don't stack. <laughs> so the first Martian grown crops are here. But they are not, um, well, eh, well, they're pretty efficient. You know, one harvest, one cereal bar. And cereal bar does last quite a long while. So I guess at this point you can turn up the hunger if you want to. Um, but I guess it's just an annoyance uh, more than anything else. So yeah, uh, feel free to rebalance that a little bit. It'd be nice at some point that you had, to, you, maybe you have to uh, eat different kinds of food. You know, you need to do uh, make the muffins, which you make with milk from soy and uh, various other crops. Let me just replant these before I forget what I was actually doing. Um, I was just going to put four back in and then I was just going to split one off, change hands and then we'll just make another quick couple of couple of cereal bars. Oops, that. <laughs> Gotta split them into ones. This is slightly annoying, it must be said, because neither of these things have any kind of automatic input. Hey, devs, if you're listening, isn't the entire point of this so that we automate things? <laughs> Can I have like an automatic, um, I don't know, stove of some kind with an import and we can import uh, our various bits and pieces. Let's pop you in there. And yep, that should be it. There we go. And that's, I guess that's pretty much going to be enough for quite a while, uh, at least a few episodes, so that's that's pretty good. So let's just put one inside my uniform, just in case I get the hunger warning at the top right. It's around 30% that that actually happens. And here we've got the re wheat ready to go for another day, and it'll be a while before the sun comes back up. But otherwise, I think we're looking pretty good in here. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with this so far. Another couple of comments that I got was that these are too close together. Absolutely, you're right. I was just doing that to be quick in the um, the episode. What I'd ideally want is the um, you know the, the the output of the system to be probably right here, and the input. Well, I'd sort of like it in in down here or something like that, so that we get the. Uh, it doesn't shouldn't much matter once we're inside one block space it sort of calculates them in blocks, but um, I want them as far apart from each other as possible, just so that uh, the flow has a chance to go through the room and we have a chance to filter out all the oxygen. Uh, when they're right next to each other like this, it's sort of calculating in a single block. That That's fine. Uh, it still works. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it still works. It just won't be as, as good as it might otherwise work. That said, what we're probably going to do eventually here anyway is to hook this entire thing up to a gigantic gas control system where this thing just gets sorted with CO2 and not much else. And uh, we filter out the N2, the pollutants, and we filter out the O2 into their own respective tanks. I think today we're not going to do all of that, though. We're going to get started, I think, with having a replacement source of, for this. I want uh, our first tank of CO2, and to do that we can just draw straight out of the atmosphere uh, filter anything but CO2 and just push it straight back out again. Or, you know, we can just have those going into other tanks if we want to. Now, there are a few different types of tanks, and the one that we can probably use is not necessarily this one, but there's a one above this that lets us build a, a, essentially a huge tank if we want to. Um, I'm not so sure what, what we should go for at this particular point. I'm, I'm going to have a look at the cost for that first, and let's see just how expensive it gets. Oh, and also someone did comment about these road flares and the fact they're still going. I, I, I don't know why. There's, there's, there's nothing, nothing I know about these. They just never seem to go out. Maybe that's just me. But uh, it's sort of nice to have the red lights on Mars anyway. Uh, what else can we actually get out of here? 
We've still got eggs. Uh, I don't want to do those. We need an oxygen environment for those to make get chickens. We can take more cereal bars out of here, though. And we've got three. We've got some soybeans, some corn, some potato, and some ferns. So sorry for the milk, corn. Not sure what that's going to be used for, the potatoes, uh, etc. The potatoes we can put in the microwave directly, I think, to get, uh, well, obviously baked potato. Well, microwave potato. Mm. Not sure about the utility of that butter, <laughs> or at least that the uh, how good those are going to taste. We don't exactly have butter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure what. If you, I'm not sure if you can try to make some sort of butter out of soy milk. <laughs> Back onto tanks. Okay, so here we have the kit tank, and it's going to take five grams of copper or. G's of copper, ah, grams just the wrong units, and 20 of steel. So uh, that's not terribly bad though, because if you remember, we made 200 grams of steel uh, just to basically make all of that structure. So that's that's pretty good. Um, we can make a few tanks. So I don't have, and I don't intend to have these solar panels here for too much longer. I'm going to put them on the hill now that we have access to a decent amount of materials. I will keep them, however, for now. We have about four, one, three blocks to play with out here, and we could use that to, um, to sort of create any kind of gas system that we want to start with. Let me just pop you over here. Uh, I didn't take a look at this at the end of the last episode, but if you can have a look at this now, it is 4K, 4,000 kPa, and my current tank is 5,500, and just to verify that this is everything we wanted, yep, it's 100% O2, which is exactly what we needed. And that's uncontrolled at the moment, so you have to... <laughs> don't go too mad with it, but uh, we don't have that much oxygen to play with. Um, at some point soon we'll have to just send that into its own system, and of course we'll move other stuff around. Um, this will also get quite hot, up to 230. But during the night time and when there's no plants growing, it, it will get depleted by those radiators. Again, the radiators, I think, need steel as well, if I remember correctly. Let's go and take a quick look. So I will make more of those. Um, let's just have a look. Uh, oops, to make sure I'm not in that mode. Uh, pipe radiator, I want to say. Pipe radiator. Let's just get rid of you for a second. Yeah, that's steel as well, and gold. So, get rid of both of those. Shut this down for some power savings. And I think the stuff... In fact, this may be actually be empty. I think we may have used it all. Uh, I don't certainly have materials elsewhere, so I think I'm going to go, need to go mining again. And... Oh, no, we've got some copper. We can make copper, that's easy enough. And there's no gases to capture off that anyway. Got some coal and some lead, and that's about it. So I'm going to need to go and get some gum, uh, gold. I'm going to need to get some iron and probably more coal. And we'll make another batch of steel, and then we'll make a tank or two. Okay, usual uh, well steel procedure. So we're just going to get uh, split one and split one again, and let's just grab both of those. I think actually I may have needed two. Uh, lots last time I tried this because we've got lots of ingredients so let's just try it with two lots and let's just swap those over split one and split one again so we've got two there we go and let's pop this in so we're putting up iron a whole lot of iron yep it's taking a while to import there we go second stack And maybe a third stack? Yep. So at the back here, we've still got the same sort of system we had before. I'm not going to worry about this side. This side will just pump everything it can into this tank connector section uh, once we open the valves, that is. And at the moment, I've got some gold cooking up in there. So our generic waste tank is, uh, is out back there, still collecting it. There we go. So, smelting or coal, and there it is. So, we should have everything we need, hopefully. Start the furnace up. We'll produce 200 
G of steel. Yep, there we go. Close the mold. We've got 200 steel. Good. And <laughs> a furnace with 4.5 kPa at a temperature of 1300 Kelvin. <laughs> Which is fine. Uh, all I need to make sure is I just swap my belts back over. Uh, have you finished yet? Oh, that would help if I actually turn that system on. Oh, well. There we go. Oh, and it finishes. <laughs> May have wasted a lot of that gas. Never mind. Let's go and uh, go and grab this tank from the back. And uh, let's go and put it into our recovery system. Just so that we don't waste any of the gases from this. With lots of pollutant and uh, water and oxygen and everything else in here, really, but uh, that is okay. Let's just see what's in here. Okay, it's at minus 10, <laughs> not long. Um, pressure is dropping because it's back flowing into this. Yeah, there you go, you see, that's increasing. Uh, that's the thing. If I put this here, then I can't then get rid of it when I take this this tank off, we'd have to have another larger system, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to open this, and that should pull through. There we go, pressure's going up now. Volume pump should be working, temperature is rising, as you might imagine. And if we have a look at the gases, pretty much uh, 14 MPa in that pipe network. Uh, I don't think I want that kind of pressure in there for too long <laughs> especially not at that temperature mm, i can never remember the actual the limits for pipes although that look does look above like the, above the limit that i remember so i'm just going to step away for a little while and let that uh, maybe cool down a little bit there we go uh, or indeed get pulled into that tank yeah it seems like it's just taking a while to get into the tank so that's fine. And what have we got in the, the furnace? The furnace is at 1 MPA. This is at 1 MPA. Yep, 2, K, uh, 2 KPA. Is that the pipe network all the way? Yes, it is. Ah, it's 2 KPA is the world. So whenever I miss, that's fine. I'll just leave that as is. So we've got some steel now to work with. And we've got some space back here. What I probably should do then is make some frames. And that will make us a platform. Let's say, let's leave a gap here just in case I get to need to get to this electronics. And then we've got four wide to work with, and we can make some tanks to put on there. Okay, so just to talk about tanks briefly, we've used this type and the tank connectors up here on top and everything else you're probably aware of. Let me just go and collect my crops before the new dawn comes. Uh, and they they work quite well, but we only really use them as very, very simple storage. What we're going to want with this other system, let me just cancel that, is the tank being pressurized to essentially infinity. I don't think the tank has any need or any limit to pressure. I will check that between the episodes. Uh, however, the inputs to it are pipes, so we can't just have <laughs> we can't just have the tank being pressurized to everything with with bare pipes connected to it. So we're going to need to use uh, regulators of some kind. And then we're also going to need to have fill stations. So not for the CO2, the CO2 fill station, if you like, inverted quote marks fill station, is a system that inputs into here, maybe. But for O2, we'll certainly need a fill station. So we're going to need some pressure regulators for that. Let me just put the wheat away. I'll process it later. But for now, this can stay static, which will just save me a little bit on power. You can see it's 34 degrees in here. Yeah, so just by leaving the plants here, this is working overboard. So let me just uh, have a look. Uh, not the world. Show me what the pipe network's at. Yeah, 370 degrees. That will do fine. It will cool down by itself. Um, but just bear in mind, if you leave lots and lots of plants like that, they will just keep consuming uh, Heat, and what's the O2 level like in here? Yeah. <laughs> it's half and half, so we've got plenty of O2 we can recover from the system. When we build something, let's go and put some tanks down. And in case I haven't already said, by the way, even though the fabricator can do almost anything that we want, these tools are most often faster. So if, you, if you've got something you know you need, 
you may as well just leave these set to a certain recipe. Uh, in fact, there's a few recipes that the fabricator can't do, but these are certainly faster at making things like cable coil and steel frames and everything else like that. So yeah, don't try and use the fabricator for that kind of stuff. You may as well just make it straight out of these machines and get everything sorted. And the sun's about to come up, which will make it hopefully a little bit easier for you to see when we start putting in some uh, of those tanks. Once I've got a floor in, uh, a couple more. Yeah, just one more will do, and we'll just put some flooring down. So if I, yeah, let's say I put them like this. And that would seem to be okay. I'll need another one, which is just printed off. And then we'll need to switch to steel sheets. And they're just half, half a, a unit, but they should be quite fast coming out, I think. Yeah, there they go, two. So I'm just going to weld those up, and we'll be right back. Okay, with the floor welded up, I did actually go and look on uh, online to just to double check. So I just want to make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong with that. We're fine. Uh, those those pipes will stand up to uh, 60 MPA, and we were only at 15, so no problem with those. It's only really the canisters that burst at, burst at 10. I can never remember that when I actually want to. Yeah, but anyway, we've got a couple of kit tanks made from our fabricator, the 20 steel each. And that lets us do stuff with them. Uh, for example, one thing is to maybe out here build some sort of system that just buffers CO2 ready to go inside. So that might be a good thing to put here and we'll move this canister across maybe or something like that. And then uh, once we have a buffer system out here, that buffer system will contain only CO2 and then um, we'll, we'll feed that inside whenever it needs it, save it polluting the rest of our system. So if I right click here, there's a couple of tank variants. Now, last time I played, there was only this small tank, okay? And it's relatively nice. Uh, let me just actually uh, build it just so that you get the idea. Uh, the pipe connector, where are we gonna put the pipe connector for it? Uh, let's put it to the right, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's put it across here. I'm gonna want a little bit of room. Okay, there we go. So, as you can see, there is a power, well, data. I don't think there's a power connect to this thing, or you would expand, expect a tank not to need power, of course. The data just helps us read certain things like what's in it, etc. And on this side, there is a uh, an output that we can use. Now, <laughs> here's the, well, there is another type of tank. So if we want to build, uh, let's say, a scroll wheel up, yeah, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's immense. Okay, <laughs> now neither of them. Uh, hopefully, you can see that. It's about I don't know, sixteen times the the other one, I guess, because uh, it's going to be two blocks wide, isn't it? Whereas that's only one block wide, so that's uh, a quarter. But then you know it's going to be, yeah. So it's going to be sixteen times the size or there thereabouts. Now these don't have any kind of burst. They, they, they're not going to blow up on you, so you don't need to worry about that. They do have a capacity, but it's only the capacity in terms of the, the volume, the amount of gas that it can hold, not, not the pressure that it's at. So uh, that's when you want to go across the large tank. As far as I know, <laughs> we're not going to need that large tank for a while. So we can actually just go ahead with a, a, the, the small tank. Oh, <laughs> it looks a lot cuter, but yeah, we can go ahead with a small tank. And I think out here, all we're going to need is maybe our fill station, which probably means this one should be um, oxygen. Yeah. So we need to go and get our spray uh, spray paint, I think, just to make sure that I color these correctly. Well, uh, I'm using dark blue for H2O. I'm using red for pollutant. Um, white is what we've been given for our air tank, so we should probably keep that same color scheme which probably means i just need a yellow tank for the co2 that's sort of what we've also been given the waste tank is just co2 in our suits so this will just help keep reminded uh, reminding ourselves and let's just head out there oh our battery's fully charged for the first time good we're not using excessive amounts uh so is this gonna be the co2 one yeah i think it is okay pretty cool i like it and now we're going to be feeding into the here. There's an active vent on the inside at the moment, but that could be changed to a passive vent easily enough. 
but we are going to need to read a few values if we want to do that. In here, we have the gas sensor. There it is, and we're reading one thing off it, which is the temperature at the moment. We'll probably need to read the pressure off it, and that means probably rearranging that cable because it's not connected to anything else other than this one logic reader. Um, so yeah, let me just rearrange a few bits and pieces. Okay, so now we've got a few bits and pieces. Uh, we've got a passive vent and active vent. I've just robbed the passive vent off the wall there. Uh, let's, no, let's just move that out of the way. And an atmospherics kit. Whoops. Uh, let's just build you. We want the filtration unit again. And our inputs. I oh God, I can never remember these inputs, can I? Uh, inputs are going to be from the left. And the waste is going to be going at the back. So I'm going to want them to put my inputs this way, I think. And then we will put them like that. I want to say, which is actually pretty ideal. Now, can I, can I just connect? Will you let me connect you directly? Yes, you will. Good. So that is my input. That's my waste. And this is what I want. And this is what I want is going to be CO2. So I'm going to need to build a CO2 filter and turn off my jetpack. So let's just set a filter up unless I already have one. I don't mm, Do I have a CO2 filter. No pollutant and water. So filter. I do love it. The fact that we've got a drop down list filter CO2 five iron. The other good, really good thing about this is you can designate quantities and just leave it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can use some electronics to control the other machines, but uh, to get started, at least in the early game, we're not going to have that kind of uh, level of stuff. So uh, here comes the filter. And let's pop you in. Let's just make sure that we have, I guess, everything we need around the back. Uh, this is going to be waste to get started with. It's just a test with. There we go. And the waste can come out here for now. Okay. And then we just need some power. Which we can pull down from the... Whoops. Pull down from the top. I'm going to be running out of... Um, I'm going to be running out of propellant fairly soon. Yeah, 582. Thankfully, you can use your waste tank... Assuming I hadn't emptied it earlier in the day into that room just to make a bit extra pressure. Uh, you can use your waste tank as propellant in an emergency, so just do bear that one in mind too. And that needs cleaning up, doesn't it? So why don't we clean those up now? Um, there we go. Let's just deconstruct both of you. We almost want to swap the way they worked around. There we go. Oops. Junction. And then we're going to need to go down that wall, aren't we? So let me just uh, put those in place. Okay, so if we turn you on, we should be drawing in and producing essentially lots and lots of CO2. And this is producing other stuff, but we're not going to need that as much. So that is fine. Then what we need to do is uh, sort of carefully... Well, let me just take that canister out. That's the O2 line. Uh, I'm going to need to remove all of that. So let's just pop that out there for now. And why don't we just... Uh, is it uh, the... There we go. There we go. I'll need to remove all of it anyway, because we're going to need to rework it. But uh, for now, that's fine. So we're going to CO2, and we're going to fill this up with CO2 as a buffer. And then we're going to want to control this. And I think what we're going to do there is a pressure regulator. And that is uh, should keep all in there nicely pressurized without that active vent. We're going to be able to replace the active vent with a passive one, I think. So let's just grab this. So uh, can we get that? I would love a search. <laughs> please give me a search soon. I just want to press F and then type, please, and have it just, you know, contract to just the things I want. Um, yeah, that will be a really, really handy feature. Uh, so pressure regulators. Do I remember where they are? You can always go back to the hydraulic. Ah, there we go anyway. Pressure regulator. There's two types. I'm going to just make a couple. Uh, regular kind of ingredients, so there's nothing excessive there. There's a forward pressure regulator and a back pressure regulator. The forward one, um, see, two different types. 
The forward one essentially uh, tries to make whatever's in front of it the pressure you set. And it'll try and keep pulling from, from behind itself as much as it can do until that pressure is correct. And that's what we're going to use here. The other kind is the back pressure regulator. That, well, that works, how that works is whatever pressure you set, it will open. Uh, well, let me get this correct because it's been a while since I use it. So if I set uh, a pressure behind it, I think it opens when it gets to that pressure. Yeah, so uh, it's sort of like a, a pressure relief valve. Uh, so when you know if it gets too high, you can open it and it will let uh, let whatever out. So you could use it as an overpressure system. In this case, we're just going to use a regular pressure regulator and just flip that around. And not that direction. Not that direction either. Not that direction. <laughs> that direction. Okay. And then we should be able to set this to whatever we like. Uh, output, um, well, we need to set it to a little bit uh, a little bit less than this. Let's just set it up to, uh, I want to say, 35? 35 seems reasonable. And there we go, it's fully connected. We've got our atmospherics in. For now, I've just put this to a passive vent. It goes back into the atmosphere. Everything else coming out, that is pure CO2, and it's coming from the atmosphere, and it's, of course, building up in this small tank. It's, it's a nice buffer that we have available to us whenever we need it, rather than, you know, depending on the speed of a, an, act, a, an active vent, something like that. We should have a big tank full of, well, CO2. Around here, then, we've got that connected up with a T-junction. Now, what we might want to do is have uh, some other arrangement here to make it a little bit better, but for the moment, we can turn on that pressure regulator then. And on the inside, uh, in fact, we need to go and fit another passive vent, I think. Uh, do we? That's on. It's an active vent at the moment. Do we have a passive? Do we have enough iron for it? Mm, might not have enough iron. I may need to rob that from somewhere else. Why is there never... <laughs> why is there never a passive vent whenever I want one? Let's just take a look at the recipe. Passive vent. Oh, no. I have just enough. That's... Good enough to finish off the episode, I think. Let's just grab you. All right, let's head inside. And we're going to remove that uh, active vent. Cycle it in. Okay, it's 52 degrees in here. Yeah, that is not working terribly well. <laughs> Thankfully... Uh, I have, um, yeah, thankfully I've removed all the crops, otherwise they might be a little bit wilted in 50 degrees air. So I'm definitely going to need to put some more radiators in there. <laughs> or we can depressurize this a little bit. So let's just uh, quickly do the maintenance we need to. And this shouldn't actually affect anything because we're above that pressure already. Uh, let me just get this the right way around. That's uh, more trouble than actually. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's grab our active vent. And that is going to push it back outwards, isn't it? But so that shouldn't be much of an issue because it's going to be regulated by the regulators on the other side. It's only this small bit of pipe network that will be over the pressure. And if we ever drop underneath it, well, then we've got, uh, we've got that, that uh, problem solved from the other side. Let's just take a look at the composition in here. Uh, it's half O2, so... An easy way to cool this down, one hopes, is to just turn on the oxygen system. I really need to build the ramp. I'm almost out of propellant, but uh, that's fine. So it's not going to be terribly great, but uh, we have this working and that will go to this tank. So you can turn this on. Okay. And we'll see it is actually acting. And then let's just take a look here. Nothing there, as we might expect. Output is 50.9. And here we've got it 50 as well. So that should pull quite a bit of the oxygen. Well, in fact, most of the oxygen out of the room. And uh, hopefully start the whole system working correctly. Let's cancel that. 
Okay, so it's 50.7 and dropping. There we go, 50.4. And you see our oxygen dropping as well, 40 moles, and that will continue to go. <laughs> All the systems are running, 49.9. Uh, Good, still too hot for plants, and we're fully working with this. That is now um, 500 degrees. <laughs> so yeah, um, if we just leave the system on its own, it won't be working very well. But at the moment, I'm sort of having to manage it while we improve our systems around this. So uh, between the episodes, I'm now going to move these. I'm going to put one in one corner, another one in, over there somewhere, and uh, we'll have the ability to draw oxygen out. We've now got the ability to insert just CO2 in. Uh, I may need to just put... Um, what I may well do is drag the air, con air scrubber in here, the battery-powered one, and just have it uh, filter out the N2 and the pollutant. And then we should end up with a situation where we shall only end up with CO2 in here, only end up with O2 in here, and uh, most of the O2 should go out. So ideally, if we had the power, which we don't quite yet from the solar panels, but if you have the power, we want the systems on all the time, that pulling all the O2 out all the time, and just having pure CO2 in here, which would be good. You can see the temperature's fallen already by four degrees while I've been talking. So, uh, pretty good. Uh, and now what should have happened is, because we're at 32 kPa, that system should have kicked on outside. So it should now be trying to feed in more CO2 from here. So if we head out for a second, Let's just double check that that system is now working. And out we go. Around to the back. So let's see what we've got on this pipe network. We've got 210 pascals, almost nothing. That means it is working. Because that, remember that pressure regulator will try its best to send enough gas above it, right, or forward of it, to keep it at the pressure you set, and we've set it to 35. Okay, so it doesn't have enough gas behind it yet. As soon as we draw all the O2 out of it, and eventually once it replenishes the CO2, then everything will rebalance, this will shut off, and that tank will start accumulating CO2, ready for the next time it needs it. So, big buffer, rather than having to wait for uh, that to all occur. Now what I don't know is how, just how much power, I know the air conditioner uses a huge amount of power, but these are not air conditioners, the filtration units. I don't know how much power these take, I'll go and look it up, but <laughs> four solar panels may not be enough. I'll monitor it and we'll see, hopefully the system will maintain itself. What I don't have yet is any system to heat this, other than an, a manual switch, uh, other than growing crops, sunlight, and a manual switch. So we should yeah, think about having a protection system there. As you can see, it's far more about cooling for the moment than it is about heating. So I need to go and craft some more radiators, don't I? Let's just finish off. Let's just see. I think remember they were expensive and I've just emptied this out. So let's put that back up again. Radiators. Pipe radiators, I think they're just called. I don't think they're in a kit. Pipe. Radiator? Golden steel. That seems odd. Uh, you, you know, I, I will admit that golden steel seems a very, very odd combination. But I think we've got enough, more than enough to actually make a few of those. So let's make, I don't know, six. And uh, hopefully that will let it bleed lots more heat out of that pipe, which will then stop impacting it from... <laughs> Stop it uh, causing too many issues with the rest of our system. Let's go and put this one on while that crafts more. So, yeah, just turn you around. And let's see what you're at now. Yep, 500 degrees, but at least it's falling. So, many more pipes needed into some kind of array uh, or something like that. And uh, we'll be golden. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, we've just improved our systems a little bit more. I wanted that buffer system in, we'll also have an O2 system, and next episode I'll probably put a fill system here, so we'll be, just put, be able to just put, um, you know, like this, but we'll need a regulator on this side of it. And in fact, what's that up to already? Uh, yeah, we're up to 291 kPa, so that's quite nice, and the amount of moulds we've got, of course, will be the more important one. 
Uh, we're up to nearly 700 moles. So we'll be able to set up a rather simple system at the start of next episode, just to have a fill station for canisters, lie of my air. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe, share, and like as, as you normally would. Leave comments, tell me just how wrong this is. <laughs> So, so many people having different comments. It's good. It's good because uh, it, 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 I think we'll all improve together and have a nice system at the end of the day. But uh, there's lots of other stuff uh, for this to evolve through before we get to a final system. Otherwise, we'd just be going forever and we'd never replenish our hunger. So we've got something simple built in until we get to uh, something later. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.